or at least to be with you. Welcome to all our students. Let me start by introducing our fellow, my fellow panelists, Tom Smith, Todd Smith Bergolo, who is the Assistant Dean for Students in New York City, Sue Maxim, who is the Assistant Vice President for Student Success, our Provost, Vanya Quinonez, Phyllis Mooney, who is the Executive Director of Career Services, Rachel Carpenter, who is our Dean for Students in Pleasantville, and Angie D'Agostino, who is the Dean for Students at Hub Law. Hello, everybody. Hi there. <laughs> This is the way we're going to do this. Um, and obviously, we are not professionals, so uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to bear with us. Um, we're going to talk a bit, and then we're going to open up for questions. And so for the questions features, students should use the chat feature on Zoom, and Rachel and Todd will read the chats and pose the questions. But let's start with some questions and some discussion that many people may have. I want to start by saying that I really appreciate how the students are adapting to the changed environment. I'm teaching this semester and I know that we've had to go uh, to a Zoom format and the students are doing remarkably well. And I know that many of you are experiencing a lot of challenges and I want to say that we're very proud of you and we're here to support you. And there are many, many services that some of my panelists will talk about that are available to you. I also want to say our faculty and staff have done a wonderful job in adapting on very short notice. So um, with that, let me ask the panelists any thoughts about how things have been for you, any things that you want to share? So first I want to thank Go ahead, Vanya. Hi. So first I want to thank everybody that is participating today. I want to acknowledge that it's a very difficult time for all of us, including the faculty, the staff, you, the administration. We all feel the anxiety uh, of the situation, not only from the outside, but also what is happening to our university. So we're there for you. I have found that meditation, relaxation, and exercise work for me, but I know that um, we're trying to provide support to the community. We have counseling service. We have the advisors open. Talk to your faculty participate on the virtual life that we have at space, anchor yourself in your day-to-day -day routines and get help if you need. It's here. PACE has a lot of support for you. We have the learning centers open. We have the advisory services. We have counseling services and other well health activities for you. So please reach out if you're feel feeling anxious. I'm feeling a little bit anxious myself, but I'm working on it. Anybody else want to add anything? Sure, I was gonna say, uh, so I have an 11 year old, so I'm, uh, I'm, I have a side gig now as a sixth grade teacher, but uh, yesterday we made, uh, we made some origami, uh, some boxes, some cranes, and, uh, and actually uh, I've been having a nice time connecting with uh, family and friends who, who I am realizing I don't connect with enough, um, and so that's been kind of a silver lining, and I'll actually say uh, Sue and Rachel and I were talking earlier, we wanted to share that uh, we got together and played a game of drawful online last Saturday, which was super fun. So <laughs> it's been nice finding new ways to connect with people. That's great. That's great. Anybody else say, want to add anything? Yeah, I would say from my perspective, for, for some of the students and the staff who know me, I'm an avid hiker, as is our provost and also Sue Maxim. And so I've been trying to hike. I For some reason, even though we're working remotely, I find that I don't have as much time as I thought I would. So I have to make a little bit more effort to go out and hike once or twice a week. Sue hikes five, like 10 miles a day. Um, and so uh, sometimes I've actually had to acknowledge that when I feel sad, so just even like two days ago out of the blue, I felt you know a little sad about our situation, about our students. And um, I have a lot of great things to be thankful for, um, but I think it's really important to acknowledge the feelings that we have. And if you are sad, acknowledge that. If you are happy, don't feel guilty about that. And one of the things that I've been using is um, I'm a big learner. So I love to understand the psychology and science behind why we feel the way that we do. So our director of counseling recommended I listen to Brene Brown's podcasts. Um, uh, unlocking us and that's actually provided me with a little bit of reassurance just like the provost was saying when I have my own anxiety about how things are going it makes sense when I listen to scientists about uh, the emotions that we're feeling that's great so, anybody um, 
Yeah, I'd love to add to that. So yes, the hiking has helped uh, me be sane, uh, but I'm also really just incredibly grateful for and in awe of the entire PACE community and how everybody has truly come together to support one another during this global crisis. But I'm particularly amazed by our students um, in terms of their resilience, their generosity of spirit and their empathy. Literally, like you said, uh, President Krizlov, from one day to the next, they had to move to a remote learning environment, despite being all over the world in different time zones and having to go to classes at 5 a.m. their time or midnight their time or whatever it is, and they're doing it. Many are caring for their family members who happen to be um, impacted by the coronavirus. Other family members and students themselves have, have lost their jobs. I have one student who is a single mom, goes to, um, well, now is doing it remotely, but works full time. Um, goes to school full time, has two kids, is now homeschooling them like Patrick. I mean, like uh, like Todd. Sorry, Todd. Um, and she's she's doing really well in her classes, and yet she's finding the time that she does not have to write to healthcare workers to thank them for putting their lives in the line every single day. Mm -hmm. Another student of mine purchased uh, gloves and masks to give out to healthcare workers. I've had students use social media to educate others about mental health and well-being and how people really need to take care of themselves. Self-care is so important, especially during this global crisis. And then a lot of other students are participating in the community, um, the Center for Community Action and Research's everyday activity, what is it called, everyday activity, activism initiative, where they get to um, do all sorts of e-activism, whether it's getting people to complete the census or register to vote or whatever it happens to be. And these aren't isolated incidents. It's really the norm for our PACE students. And that's what really makes me proud to be part of the PACE community. So yes, it's incredibly rough. Professors have been writing about, and staff have been writing about how difficult it is, how it's depressing not seeing the students every single day. And I'm depressed about that too but we're trying to find ways to, um, to make it work. And I know also that it's a very humanizing experience. So professors are doing Zoom um, classes and suddenly the little kids will pop up and say, hi, look, I'm on TV. And they'll start putting their hands all over the Zoom camera. And it's just, it's really nice. I had another professor tell me the other day that her son was trying to be proactive while she was teaching. And so he decided to make uh, grilled cheese in the toaster not the toaster oven, the toaster. So she had to leave her Zoom class to make sure the house didn't burn down. But these are the things that show that we are all human. We're not just sages on the stage, we're human people. And I think that kind of brings the students and the, the staff and faculty together. That's, that's great. Angie, anything from the law school or your observations? Well, I think one of the things that, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and and um, I hope everyone is well. One of the things that I think this has really struck home, and, and Todd said something very personal, and you know, I have a, I have a son with um, dis multiple disabilities, and realizing how to how this affects our students as well, who have learning differences, and really now being there for them in a way that we really couldn't understand before. A Zoom class doesn't work for, for many people with different issues, and the fact that we've been able to really respond to that. Um, and how difficult it is for so many of our students who receive such wonderful support when we're on the ground from the counseling center, still receiving that point, that support, but knowing that the environment puts them at, at learning at home just puts them in a whole different world. And so I think I've learned so much from our students. I am so grateful. Um, and also from this situation at home, which I can't even I can't describe how crazy it is, but um, and the fact that you know the, the situation wasn't set up for the for those with mental health issues or for those with uh, learning um, disabilities, and so it's difficult. And I'm proud that we're all there. I, the students have to know we are we will get you through this. We have the tools and we will figure it out um, because it can be figured out. That's great. Thank you, Angie. Okay, let's let's um, go to some questions. Um, first of all, what's the plan for commencement? Um, Vanya, could you answer? Yeah, so first of all, if you're graduating, you will graduate. 
you will receive your diploma. This is really important. Commencement is a celebration of your graduation, but if you have a good standing and you finish all your courses, you will have your diploma. Now, we're going to have different opportunities. One of them is a virtual graduation, graduation of May. Uh, school will have a virtual graduation. They will call you and celebrate at that time. We want to really celebrate your accomplishments. And then all graduating seniors will have the opportunity to walk later on on stage, either on a graduation for in, in December or January. We don't know the place or the time yet. And then and or um, the one on May 2021. So you will have an opportunity to have a walkthrough stage graduation, plus you will have a virtual graduation. Okay. And, um, and Van, Van, sorry, Marvin Vanya, there's a follow up question from a student in our chat about if there were any uh, updates on the end of year award ceremonies by school, because I know that's part of the, the commencement process. So we're going to have the award ceremonies also virtually. And there will be an announcement when the graduation announcement comes out. The award ceremony will be included in there. So we will celebrate awards virtually um, and it will be within each school. The virtual graduation and the award ceremony will be school related activities. Great. Thank you. Okay. And what about finals? How are finals going to work this year? Sue, Vanya, who? Go ahead. And also, if you want to jump in, or um, we're just going to work basically, we're right now figuring it out as the semester goes forward. Your faculty will let you know. So please be sure to talk to your faculty. They will make announcements on how they're going to do finals. We're trying to figure out how we're going to give them, but um, we just have to go through your, you have to go through your faculty to get information. Okay. Um, how is the current crisis affecting plans for summer internships and jobs? Phyllis? Sure. Thank you, Marvin. Well, all things considered, um, it looks pretty, I mean, it looks okay for summer internships and jobs. A lot has changed, but there are many opportunities. So what's changed? How employers are connecting to our students. I mean, I was so disappointed um, this semester we had to cancel all those fairs, those in-person fairs and info sessions um, that we had to cancel because we closed campuses. Um, but the good news is that all these employers have been so collaborative and they've been outreaching us. They want to meet our students. They want to continue to recruit for summer internships and entry-level jobs. So how are we doing this? They're doing it through virtual info, info sessions and, and webinars um, that we're scheduling through the um, career services. Um, they're also moved all their interviewing to a virtual platform, um, which they're coordinating through our office. Um, some of the, uh, these employers are making a pause or pausing on making final decisions, um, but that's not to say that they're not continuing to recruit. They're just, they're having, they're, they're taking a wait and see approach and they're holding their best um, candidates to the side to see um, how things change and when people can go back to, a, you know, a normal way of doing business. Um, some of our internships this summer we know that are starting a little bit later, but they are starting. And some of these internships are starting on time. Um, and these employers are willing to onboard and train summer interns remotely if need be. Um, and then we also know that some internship programs had to cancel. Um, but there are plenty of other opportunities out there. So who's hiring and what are the um, industry sectors at the moment that are trending? Um, healthcare, of course. Uh, movies, TV, music, and entertainment. We see tons of postings for jobs and internships there. Research, advertising, um, public relations, marketing, education, especially K through 12, and nonprofits, especially the social assistance sectors. And um, President Krizlov, I understand you want to share some great news with yes. everyone? Yes. Well, thank you, Phyllis. Um, and thank you for everything you do. You do. Um, we're going to be announcing in the next week or so a program designed to help our students get internships over the summer with social service organizations, 
government organizations specifically designed to help in the recovery in New York. Um, these are going to be funded by PACE, and we're fundraising for that money right now. And uh, I hope to have the announcement ready in the, the next week. And we're going to be working with Career Services and CCAR and all the great people that do this kind of work on a regular basis. So if that's something that interests you, uh, please keep your, your eyes and ears open for that. And uh, we'll be in making announcements soon. Thank you so much. And may I share some tips on how what, what students should be doing now? Could I do that right now? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so what should you all be working on right now? Make sure your resume is up to date and is ATS compliant. Um, if you have any questions about that, please make an appointment with career services, a counselor, so you can get that finalized. Um, practice your virtual interview skills with a career counselor. You can make an appointment specifically for that. Read our emails. We're sending at least one email a day with the list of all new um, postings that came in the day before. And those are for summer internships, full-time jobs, um, and also remote opportunities. Um, check out our calendar of events every day for virtual employer info sessions. Our goal is to have at least one scheduled per day. Yesterday we had three scheduled and there's a great variety there for it, something for everybody. Um, follow us on Instagram especially for our hot picks of the day. Um, we have a student pick what or they think are the, the hottest jobs and internships that came in that day. Um, make sure you complete your handshake profile um, and check, check that out at least once a day uh, for new postings. And remember to put your alerts on um, so you can get, um, you can get uh, your dings and pings when, um, uh, when, when new job opportunities and internships um, um, happen or get posted, and just make sure that you stay in touch with us until you land something. Uh, we're in this with you, and um, and we're in this with you, and just make sure that you're keeping in touch with our office and your career counselor. That's great. Angie, do you want to add anything to that? Oh, um, I mean, I think that um, Phyllis has uh, said so much and, and, and so well. I do know that at the law school, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, with the law firms, the courts closed, doing things remotely. We had a meeting with the Board of Visitors this morning, and everyone is working. Dean Anderson, Jill Backer, everyone is working really hard in terms of uh, continuing outreach and finding new and innovative ways to keep our students engaged over the summer. For example, with the Food and um, Agriculture Clinic, there's a new research project, hiring more RAs to keep students um, getting research projects done. And uh, we're just continuing to work with the law firms and see where we'll be um, in, in the next couple of months. But um, it is a little bit different on the, on the law school side for our students because law firms, um, they don't have the work right now and the courts are, are basically closed. But we're there for the students and we're also gonna be offering um, hopefully a new summer selection of courses so that we can keep the students engaged all summer on the courses that they'll need um, to move forward as quickly as possible. Right. Um, what services are available for students, whether in or out of the residence halls? Todd, Rachel? I can answer from a perspective. Sorry, Todd and I are, uh, just as a reminder to everybody who's watching, Todd and I are monitoring the chat box. So we're actively writing down a lot of the questions that you have so that we can get prepared uh, to ask those. But in answer to, to this particular question from our president, um, I can speak from a counseling uh, perspective. Uh, all of our counseling services have been moved online as most of our student affairs services have. So our counselors are conducting teletherapy. Uh, they're also, uh, some of them are doing video conference therapy. There are individual sessions. We have group sessions that are actually gonna start going online because our counseling centers, um, both campuses have had group therapy sessions for various topics. So they're going to be implementing that as well. Um, and they are also doing new intakes of students. So that those services are still available, whether you are a commuter student, a resident student that has become a commuter student, or those for the few who are still left on our campuses. Um, but I turn it over to Todd maybe to talk about our activities, uh, the services that are still available. Yeah, and thank you, Rachel. And before I say that too, I mean, the Learning Center, the Writing Center, your academic advisors, the library, um, all have services available. Um, but yeah, in student development campus activities on both campuses, we're working together um, with many other campus partners too, athletics, 
Um, you know, Phyllis mentioned some of what Career Services is doing. Um, many offices are working together to offer online opportunities. Um, some of them are focused on wellness. So I mentioned athletics, they're doing um, different workout classes. Um, some folks are providing um, mindfulness workshops and meditation workshops. We're working with counseling to provide some of those and some other faculty members. Um, and we're also providing a lot of just fun opportunities to de-stress, connect, engage. Um, we had a dance party with a DJ last week. I, I saw a few people um, here in the chat um, and, and some of our panelists were there. Um, this week we have a, a video you can watch from a, a hypnotist magician uh, who created a video for us. Um, we have uh, trivia events twice a week. We've had a lot of things going on. And this week is Spirit Week, actually. It was already planned, um, but we decided to move it remotely. So um, we've got a lot of information out there. Um, the best place to see um, kind of everything together of what's happening is a new remote living website that we created. So it's pace.edu slash remote living. Um, and if you go on there, you'll see a whole variety of things that are happening every week from PACE, but also some um, ideas of other things you can engage in that might be happening you know, out there uh, in, in the world that are not coming specifically from PACE. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're all staying connected. Uh, I think we all know that that's, that's good for us, right? That's good for our mental health. And um, some of us do have a little bit of extra time on our hands. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're giving you those opportunities to engage. So we encourage you to check that all out. Again, the Remote Living website, or follow uh, SADACA or SDCA on the Pleasantville campus um, on Instagram. We're posting everything there as well. There's been a follow-up question actually about, since you mentioned President Kristoff about what is happening inside and outside the residence halls. Uh, we had a question in the chat box about what we're doing for or about students who have no place to go. They're maybe not from the tri-state area. They are from states or countries that are not allowing them to return home. We made it a priority on all three of our campuses, including our law school, that if students did not have a place to go, that we wanted to allow them to stay in residence with us. And so that is going to be our continued um, commitment to our students who some of them have no place to go or don't have a safe place to go or travel logistically or health-wise uh, might have family members that they don't uh, might be in a vulnerable population for COVID-19 or might be even vulnerable themselves. So we want to reassure you that if you're in our residence halls, we are here for you. Uh, there may be some relocations um, to consolidate some of our buildings, but that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis for each of the campuses, and that'll be coordinated through your housing offices. And that's great. Thank you very much. Um, let's move to the questions now. Sure. Um, I'll take the first one from the chat. Um, so there's uh, a couple different questions uh, related to the CARES Act coming from the federal government. Obviously, that's something we're all hearing about uh, in the news. Um, what does, what do we as the university, what do we know about the, the CARES Act? Um, you know, there's information out there that um, a large portion of that money is going directly to students. Um, so what, what are we doing about that? What do we know about it? Um, what are our plans regarding that? Well, let me, let me start and just saying that um, we're very pleased that the government has um, given us some money under the CARES Act, under the stimulus package. Um, half of that is supposed to be for students, and we are getting guidance right now for the federal from the federal government. And I hope within the next week or so, we will have specific information. But our goal is to support students, particularly the neediest students, um, because that's the way the act was designed. There also will be another portion of money, and we expect most of that to also support, in fact, all of it to really support students and, and their success. Um, again, we're waiting on specific guidance about how that can be utilized, um, but we are very committed to supporting students and their families during what we know is a very difficult time. Great, thank you. Uh, Rachel, do you want to take the next question from the chat or would you like me to? Yeah, no, I can do that. So there have been a couple questions in the chat uh, concerning the housing adjustment and how the university arrived at the housing adjustment, um, as some students have communicated some questions and concerns about the amounts that they've received or will receive. 
So I would take that question, that answer. Um, basically, we, the last week, we have started releasing the adjustment um, money. If you can apply through the website, it is important for us to have until May 16 to do that. So please let us know um, if you want to have the adjustment in, in to you or if you want to just apply to next year. If you apply to next year, it will be $200 extra as a bonus. Um, so we calculated this based on um, the cost of the housing to continue having the housing uh, ready for next year, plus all the other costs of the university, and we adjusted um, accordingly. This is not, um, this is the amount that was um, released. If you need more information, we have uh, how we calculate this in the website, in the, our coronavirus website. And we also, uh, I just want to remind everybody, we just sent an email today with a lot of updates. If you could please look at it to the students, it includes the summer housing, it includes care acts, it includes the adjustment and other information. So please a shout out to the email that was just sent this morning. Great, thank you, Vanya. Um, and actually um, from the chat, uh, I wanted to, uh, going back to the CARES Act, I actually wanted to plug something um, someone had mentioned that government and community relations and the Center for Community Action and Research are co-hosting a Q&A uh, event um, about the CARES Act on April 28th. So uh, that's during Common Hour. Um, so definitely watch out for that because um, that'll be um, a, a helpful place to get more information as well. Um, moving on to another question. Uh, there's a question about the fall semester. Um, obviously, Things are changing on a daily basis. Um, we're hearing, you know, lots of uh, various updates from the news, from our government officials. What are our plans for the fall semester at this point? So our hope is to be on campus, on all three campuses this fall. There are factors that we cannot control, namely the government and the analysis of the public health and safety, and that is that is our highest priority, the health and safety of all our folks, the students, the faculty, the staff. So our goal is to be on campus in the fall. We will uh, keep people posted and, 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 and we are tracking this every day. Um, but we are, we are thinking about all the ways in which we can help support students during what is a very challenging time in a period of uncertainty. I don't know, Vanya, if you want to add to anything on that. Yeah, so I agree with Marvin. We're going to be open. That's our hope. The virus is the one that determines what's happening. But uh, we're working on different scenarios, and you may hear about scenarios planning. This is just for us to get ready as a university. This doesn't mean that any of those scenarios will be activated. So our uh, goal will be to make a decision later on, but for now, we're going to be open on the fall. So uh, there is a question, we're going to backtrack a little bit back to summer, and there were some questions about what summer courses would be like and what they can expect as far as somebody specifically asked about a discount and if that discount applied to undergrad classes or grad classes or both. So as the email today is saying, we are very excited to say that for undergrad courses, we're providing a $200 per credit discount. Grad courses are a little bit more complicated. They have different ratios, but for undergrad is uh, $200 per credit discount. The courses as of now, they will be all on um, distance learning. Uh, we will have the three summer section, the summer section early one, the one and the two. Um, we will provide all the supports that are needed and required. The courses, are, you can register already for courses, are, are on your banner um, listing, so please register if you can. Um, and basically, that's our plan that the three, we're going to conduct the three summer sections. Okay, great. Um, I'm, the next question, I'm actually going to pose it to you, Rachel, so I'll, I'll pull the following question off the chat as well. But uh, there's some questions about housing deposits for the fall, and, and Angie, um, maybe for you as well, the law school. Um, but do current students, uh, what do they need to be doing right now in terms of their housing for next year? Uh, you know, room selection, deposits, uh, what does that process look like right now? So right now, I'll answer for New York City and Pleasantville, and Angie, I really want you to, to weigh in too for the law school. So we typically have housing deposits that will secure your 
position in participating in room selection. Our room selection process has been delayed a little bit to allow for some of the communications and information to go out to students. We have put a hold on um, accepting housing deposits or requiring housing deposits until June 1. So if you have not paid a housing deposit yet, uh, you can still participate in roommate selection. We know that it's really important for you to determine who you would like to live with uh, if that is one of your preferences of picking particular roommates. So you have until June 1 to put your housing deposit down. It does not preclude you from uh, participating in our roommate selection. A couple weeks into May, our housing directors will be sending out messages about for those students who have not paid their housing deposit yet to remind them that the deadline is June 1 and that they'll also work with students on a case-by-case -case basis if May, um, for, if May ends up proving to be financially difficult for some students. Angie, what about you all in the law school? No, I think we're, we're following, as you know, um, just pretty much the same thing that the university is doing. We're out, reaching out to our current students who are off campus. June 1 is our date for uh, returners and for our new students. We're working closely with admissions as they um, move their dates for deposits um, as well. And uh, we just want to make sure that, you know, a housing deposit is not something if you can't come up with a housing deposit, that's not going to preclude you from securing your room at this particular time. So we're working with everyone, as is Rachel and um, Patrick. Great. Thank you both. Um, Sue, I have a question I think I'll pose to you. Um, you know, we've already put announcements out about the option to take classes pass-fail. Um, most courses, um, that's something that students could do. Um, some students are asking a little bit, you know, more again about that process. What do they need to do? Um, what should they be thinking about when they're trying to make the decision about um, moving a class to pass fail or not? And, you know, who, who should they talk to about that? Thank you. So, yes, this is a big decision that they should not take lightly. And although we are uh, offering most classes as pass fail, it does depend on their major. Uh, but they should absolutely positively meet with their advisor and discuss the pros and cons of it because it can affect their financial aid. It can affect their um, being on the dean's list um, and academic scholarships and things like that. So absolutely, they should speak with their advisor and consult with financial aid. Financial aid developed an amazing uh, portal uh, that students can ask questions in and they will get back to them ideally within 24 to 48 hours. They do need to make the decision for pass-fail by April 27th. Um, so they need to think about that very soon. And um, by April 20th, which is Monday, they need to think about whether or not they want to withdraw from any of their courses. Because we do realize that moving to this online environment wasn't anything that people had uh, bargained for to begin with. And some students, it just doesn't mesh with kind of like what Angie was saying, their learning styles or abilities. So we want to be as flexible as, as possible with them, but also as realistic as possible in terms of um, the potential ramifications. So there was a specific uh, question uh, that I did want to be able to address. Uh, there is a student who and I'm actually going to ask the question that I end up answering about student run businesses. So in the Pleasantville campus, we have multiple student run businesses, whether it's the Pace Mart, Pace Perk, Pace Delivers, Pace Fit, uh, Pace Connect. And I know that there's been a question about how we can pay those students who are out of work. And I just ch chatted with Dr. Winstead. So for the students who are having a question about that, I would get in touch with your man your student manager and or Dr. Winstead to uh, understand a little bit more about the operations and where their funding comes from and uh, to answer that question. I didn't want to leave that unanswered, but even though I don't have the answer, I want to connect you to who does. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Rachel. Um, Bonnie, the next question is going back to commencement. I know you talked before about um, our plans around virtual ceremonies and in-person ceremonies at a later date, um, but there are some questions about when degrees will be conferred. Um, specifically, you know, some people might be applying to grad school um, and need, you know, proof that they received their bachelor's degree, for example. Um, so some questions around that, around the conferral date. So if you have everything ready, like all your courses are there, your degree will be confirmed at the end of the semester. If you have a clinical placement said a um, clinical placement or something that is outstanding due to the coronavirus, we will work with you and we're aiming that 
you will get that degree once you do that clinical placement. So we're hoping that all of those placements will occur during the summer and your degree will be um, uh, given during this at the end of the summer. So we are not changing when we're giving the degrees. If you're, if you're graduating in May 2020, your degree will be confirmed at that time. If there is something pending, which is clinical or something else, we will talk to you, but the degree will be uh, completed once that assignment is done. So if we could look into our crystal balls here and decide what's going to be happening in the fall semester. Uh, and I know everybody has these questions about if we were to, wh whenever we make the decision to, to open up campus, uh, that it, there's a lot of external circumstances at play. But if, if when we return in the fall, what does social distancing maybe have an impact on as far as classes or class sizes? And how are we kind of having those conversations right now as an institution to plan for the, all those scenarios? Bonnie, Marvin, okay, I was going to ask you, you want me to answer. So basically, part of the scenario planning that the institution is doing is to see what does social distance means in a classroom set setting. Does it mean smaller classes, which people can see it with social distance? Does it mean um, to have everybody with face masks during the semester? We're working on all of those different scenarios and we will guide the community once we know what are the expectations from, remember we're following CDC recommendations and New York State recommendations. So we have to follow whatever the government wants us to do. So our number one concern is the safety of our students, our faculty and our staff. So we will follow those recommendations to ensure that everybody's safe at pace. Um, we will have very uh, detailed guidance once we know what is gonna happen on the fall. But it goes all the way from, you know, distance classroom setting, maybe the cafeteria having a different structure. Uh, all of these things we're working on those scenarios right now in order to keep everybody safe. Okay, great. Um, so we are, uh, Rachel and I have been um, checking the chat. There's been a lot of questions, but um, we have not been able to get to all of them, but we're getting to as many as we can. Um, but there's one question here, and maybe as we, as we aim towards starting to wrap things up, um, but a question here around, you know, what tips do you have uh, for students during this time, whether it's related to academics, um, to mental health, um, to, you know, spending time productively, um, just some personal tips you might have for students. So I think we'll take a couple of people's thoughts on that. I think I just want to go first. Um, so I'm almost isolated here in a room by myself with three dogs. Um, and what I have find is that I, um, some kind of planning, taking care of yourself mentally, physically. I go running every morning, um, anchoring yourself on a routine, acknowledging your grief. We are grieving our life. We are changing. I mean, we, we, you did not sign to have pace virtually. We did not sign to be working on this way. Our life has changed. I miss my friends in the train. I miss many people. Acknowledge that and try to cope with this. And if you need help, get help. It's, you know, everybody's in the same boat. And I think sometimes that helps to know that um, even also we are grieving our life too. Um, but try to center yourself, meditation, exercise, and more important, have a routine. And social distance doesn't mean it shouldn't be social distance, it's physical distance. Social distance, we're still here interacting socially. Talk to your friends, as Todd said, I've been talking to friends that I haven't talked in a long time. Try to make connections. Keep yourself with the center of the people that help you. Um, but the most important thing is acknowledge the grief and work with it. Um, and I think that uh, in my turn is, you know, I run every morning uh, and that helps me a lot, or at least I'm so... Pain, everything is so pain that I cannot think about anything else the rest of the day. But just figure out what works for you and, 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 and just do it. Just, just take care of yourself. Okay. Todd, yeah. I mean, uh, my recommendation is to stay optimistic. And the way to stay optimistic is to do one thing towards your career every single day. Commit to one thing, just like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth twice a day. Do one thing towards your career um, once a day, whether it's participate in one of the career services virtual info sessions, 
um, apply to a handful of jobs that just came hit the board in, 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 um, in Handshake. Um, read something about it, an industry that's trending. If you've never considered working in the operation side of healthcare, maybe do a little research on that. Call Career Services. We can introduce you to an alum who works in healthcare, and they'd be happy to, you know, to you know, to talk to you um, through an information, uh, inter an informational interview, so you can get some more information about what it would be like to work in that industry. But to do one thing every day towards your career, there's so much um, activity that. Um, is that that you know that can be ha happen that's out there and uh, and I find that when you feel like you're in control and you're working towards something you're just so much more optimistic and it gives you so much more confidence yeah I love that I think you know there's so many free opportunities to do that right now right to learn a new skill um, you know taking a, an online course you know even outside of PESA an online course to learn how to use some um, technological tool or platform or um, you know learn a new language or what have you but some some great opportunities for resume building so that's great anyone else with some tips for students I, I go ahead <laughs> There's there is one thing that uh, I, for those of you who know I'm a huge Clifton Strengths top five fan, and one of my strengths is achiever, and it means that I love a to do list and I love ambitious goals and I love to get through everything, and I'm not able to do that as much as I thought I would. So to all the the students and the staff and the faculty who seem to find themselves not able to pick up a new language or to pick up a new hobby or to, to start or invest in that side hustle that you had. That's okay. It is absolutely okay for you to just say that you made it through the day and you don't need any added pressure. And I hear a lot from people who um, they say, I just do my normal routine. And I wish I had their normal routine. Their normal routine is I get up at five in the morning, I, I go for a run, I sit and listen to the news or, or I do a puzzle or whatever. I said, I'm getting out of bed a half hour before I have to be on a Zoom call at nine o'clock in the morning. And I'm just not that type of morning person. This is probably not the time for me to try to be a morning person. So it's absolutely okay. <laughs> By the end of the day, you just got through the day and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, you see a lot on social media, for example, like what other people are doing and you got to make sure you're not comparing yourself, right? Um, I mentioned before having a son, you know, some other parents I know are doing all these amazing projects for their kids and stuff like that. It's not what we're doing, right? But you have to be content with what you're doing. And like you said, you're getting through the day. So, um, so I wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, I'd say that the one thing that I'm trying to do is um, sort of the equivalent of what Phyllis said to try to do one thing to reach out to somebody, um, maybe someone from my past, uh, maybe someone who is not doing so well, um, to try to reach out to at least one person every day. And, and that always helps me feel good and it makes the person feel good. And it reminds me of the, the, the importance of connection. So Yeah, yeah, especially some of those healthcare workers we know. Um, appreciate that outreach. So I just wanted to say that, yeah, and I, and I, and I agree with all of that. I think that's, um, Mark, President Krizov, what you just said is so important. We reminded our students recently, you know, they're in a law profession and um, the law is a helping profession. So we are getting them out there to help. And if they can just reach out to one person, one colleague, how do I help? We have students who just can't get on Zoom and they're sharing notes and they're doing other things. But I keep reminding our students and I remind everyone, Okay, like, you know, kind of Rachel said it, it's okay to just kind of get through the day sometimes. And, you know, I know the first few weeks, all I did was cook. I figured, oh my gosh, I have time. I just cooked and cooked and cooked. And I brought meals to the clergy. I brought meals to people in the, in the um, community. But you know what? I also realized that my own family and many of you and the students are going through this themselves. Look around because your kids need you. Your parents need you. A quick phone call, a quick wave, if you're not with them, it makes the world um, because it, you don't realize, as we're all working to try to keep up, how much is going on in the minds of our kids and other people who are kind of figuring out, you know, and I don't have the same, um, the same experiences. Um, and I realized that recently because I have a 17 year old who's going off to college, I hope, in the fall, and she doesn't get to do prom and my own graduation and those kinds of things. So while I'm sad, 
I realize that there's other grief out there and we're just trying to find ways. So be creative. Um, but you know what? It's okay. It, it's, we're, we're, we're going to get through this um, because we're all together. In 34 years I've been with this university. I have never seen the university come together the way it has come together to support each other and our students. Um, and I can say that because I've been here if I, probably not as long as, I don't know, maybe Sue or some others, but this is, this is, I am so incredibly proud of our students. Um, and I will just end by when I said to our students to, to help each other, we do have a staff member at the law school who is critical. And our students did a GoFundMe page for as little as they have to get through the next few months. They did a GoFundMe page and raised $6,000 in 48 hours for this family. Um, it's sad uh, what's going on, but I can tell you, our students care. And I thank you as students. I thank you as the support on this chat um, for teaching our students and teaching everyone to be part of a helping world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Sue, your, your tips? Uh, yeah, so actually I echo everything everybody said, the, the self-care, uh, the feeling of purpose, but I also want to acknowledge the fact that so many students are taking care of their family members who are ill, who lost their jobs, some of the students lost their jobs and so on, and they're doing an amazing job. It's incredibly difficult for them because a lot of them are managing part-time or full-time jobs with their kids at home um, and a sick parent or relative or whatever it is. They're doing an amazing job. Um, and for those who aren't taking care of others at home, they are giving back and I just love that. They're giving back to people they don't even know. So I just want to um, give an applause and a shout out to all of the students who are doing that as part of our PACE community. Thank you for that, I agree. So Marvin, I'm gonna hand it back to you to uh, wrap things up. I definitely wanna thank everyone for the questions they shared in the chat. We tried to get to as many as we could or to at least link some themes together. Um, but Marvin, I'll hand it back to you. Well, thank you, Todd. Thank you to everybody who participated, the students, um, the panelists. Um, one request I have of the students is to continue to watch your email. There will be more information coming out on some of the topics we've covered, commencement, the CARES Act, um, the internship support, and, and other things. And if you have specific questions, you are welcome to follow up with any of us about them. Um, I also want to acknowledge what Sue said, and it's very important that there are many students and families who are continuing to work, whether in healthcare or other essential types of operations, and, and we appreciate them and wish them um, good health and safety, and, and all of us as well. Um, I want to say that I'm very, very proud of the students, um, and I know that you all are working very hard, um, and it's not an easy time. And these are the qualities that, that we think will lead to your success in life. And we are here to support you uh, during the times. Every single person at Pace University and the faculty and staff is really committed, first and foremost, to your success. And I know that you may not always agree with everything we do, but trust me that we are very, very focused on you and your success. And if there are specific things that we need to help you with, let us know and we will see what we can do. Um, we will do this again. I look forward to seeing you again and look forward to seeing you on campus. Thanks everybody, be well. Thank you very much, be well. Thank you. Bye-bye, thanks.